Ask the Podcast Coach for May 30th, 2020. Let's get ready to podcast. I got to bring the energy, Jim. I'm bringing energy this week. Hey! (laughs) It's Saturday. There is that music. It means it's time for Ask the Podcast Coach, where you get your podcast questions answered live. I'm your host, Dave Jackson, from the School of Podcasting.com. And joining me right over there, is the one and only Jim Cullison from TheAverageGuy.tv. Jim, how's it going, buddy? Greetings, Dave. Happy Saturday morning to you. Uh, a little, a little feedback from last week. I think if you missed the show, yeah. and, some of, and some of you did. Dave wasn't bringing the energy, but he's bringing it today. Apparently, we, <laughs> apparently he's bringing it. Dave, we have a coffee pour though. We, we do have a coffee pour. Let's bring it on. Who's who sponsors us this, this pour? Of course, this is courtesy of PodcastBranding.co. Uh, the thing about this, if you're looking to look good, your podcast, you want to look good. It's affordable. It's professionally designed podcast websites, logos, artwork. You need it. Cover art, everything. There's social media, eBooks, lead magnets. Uh, this is all done by the award-winning graphic and web designer, Mark Decote. He's got over 30 years in the design field. He's been podcasting since 2013. He's branded over a hundred podcasts and he wants to work with you. And I'm listening to an audio book about crowdfunding and there's this crowdfund thing that was trying to get done and they didn't meet their, meet their goal. So the guy took the little bit of money that he did get, went and got good graphics, not from Mark. This is just a book I read, but nonetheless, point being, he got good graphics, came back and did the same crowdfunding thing and met his goal because it looked more professional. So if you want to look good, Go say hi to Mark. Say, hey, Dave and Jim said we should stop by podcastbranding.co. His mission is to ensure your podcast looks as professional as possible. So thanks, Mark, for uh, sponsoring the Coffee Pour. What uh, What are we doing for June? Have you? Well, here's the thing. The uh, I reached out to Mark and I go, the, the way we're doing this, you get first shot. You know, you can stay where you're at. Yep. Or we could throw it to chance and you might get outbid. You might have to pay more. You might have to pay less. Yeah. What are you going to do? And he said, Dave, I'm going to go ahead and take my spot in June. <laughs> so nice, man. good work. Yeah. So he uh, said, he's actually, I, I said, have you gotten any orders yet or anything? He goes, I am getting traffic. Good. So good. Like, it takes right. a little while. Like it takes a little while. I think he'll, he'll, he'll probably see because, it people need to hear it over and over and over. I think that's the mistake we make in sponsorships sometimes is thinking one or two mentions will do it. And it just doesn't, you need that consistent. You in, know. in the book profit from your podcast coming out in theory in July of 2020. Uh, I mentioned how there was uh legal zoom. You remember when legal zoom, they probably oh, still yeah. do sponsor yeah. people oh, yeah. and they were on a podcast and the first month was just horrendous. Like it was just horrible. And they actually went back to the podcaster and said, Hey, um, we're going to like cancel. I know we're supposed to be doing this for like three months, but uh, we're out. We're not getting, we're not seeing anything. So they did, they undid everything. And then another like month went by and they emailed them back and said, "Uh, we need to go again because I don't know what's going on, but like we're getting more business now because it just takes a while for people to, uh, I just look, I just listened to a show this week uh, and it was uh, Malcolm Gladwell. I forget uh, revisionist history or something like that. I play it and on comes like, you know, jingle bells and and Christmas type music because it was like some sort of Christmas special thing. And I was like, again, it's time shifted. And that, that kind of leads us to one of the things I wanted to talk about today. We got a a question here. This is in Facebook. uh, And I didn't write down the person's name. Is there a certain time of the day? that you upload your podcast, is there a certain time that is better than others? And we were, for me, I don't know why I have this weird deadline in my head yeah. that it has to be out. I typically set mine to release because I want it out on Monday morning. So I set it to release uh, Sunday or Monday at 12.01 AM, which is basically Monday morning. And um, I just figure It's, I usually don't have a problem with that. You're going to hear in the school of podcasting this week where I was really pushing it. And it's always kind of funny because I don't think there's some guy in New York or in New York, in California, I'm on the East coast. I don't think there's some guy in California at nine o'clock going, Hey dude, where's like the podcast at? Like it's nine o'clock. I want to go surfing on their phone. 
yeah. on their phone going, refresh, refresh, refresh. Yeah. You, you might be, though. The, I, I, I think the odds are, are low, but you may have a super fan who is dependent on that program coming out, like especially if you've advertised. I think you said before, right? So School of Podcasting, I think you said it comes out by midnight Eastern time on Sunday nights or something like that. You don't advertise it, but I think you've said that before. Yeah, that's when I usually post it. Sunday nights at midnight is usually when I'm going to bed and I'm posting it if it hasn't. Yeah. Been, yeah. And so there could be somebody, uh, you know, so who is that's their Monday morning commute. You know, I told you for a while that was yeah. my Monday morning commute podcast every Monday morning. So I think the odds are low. I don't think it's zero, though. I think that in some cases, there may be folks who are waiting for. I, I did the same thing last weekend. I produced, I, because of the holiday weekend, I didn't get home Gadget Geeks out till late Saturday night, I think. Yeah. Or And I try to have it out first thing Saturday morning, or maybe it was even Sunday morning. I might have waited till Sunday to get that done. And um, so I got it produced, got it published, was like, cool, I'm off the hook, you know, whatever. And then Monday morning, somebody in our Facebook group goes, hey, Jim, I can't see this because I promoted it on Facebook. And they were like, I can't see this anywhere. <laughs> like, where is it? So for 24 hours, it was nowhere. I hadn't clicked the box in PowerPress to, to add it to the RSS feed. You know, it's a category feed podcast. So hadn't checked that box. And um, so, th yeah, someone did notice. They were trying. It was Monday morning. They were trying to get it. So does it, Dave, does, does it need to be, I think the question for that you're asking here is, does it have to be, do you have to nail it every single week? Well, I think, what does your audience expect? If if you have an audience that expects you to nail it at 9 a.m. on Mondays, well, I think you better. Yeah. I, if they don't, yeah, I think you're off the hook. Kyle says, if it's not out by 12.02, he's, he's sending an email. <laughs> and that's the way people are treating it. And that's where I kind of go, I need to think about this because, like, I, I mean, I was listening to stuff from December. I have a bazillion right now in my playlist because I just got done listening to an audio book. And when I spend six hours listening to an audio book, that six hours, I'm not listening to a podcast. So I'm way behind now. And I don't care because all the stuff I listen to, you know, the only thing I can think of is if in like three months I start a podcast and they're like, all right, today we're going to talk about Joe Rogan going to Spotify. I'm like, okay, that, I don't need that anymore. Uh, so for me, I don't. I don't care, but there are, I am seeing more and more people that really start to obsess over that. Like, you know, I release at 10 51 a you know, AM mountain time. And I'm like, what? Yeah. Right. Well, maybe the audience, maybe that's yeah. an expectation that you set to the audience. And that if you have that kind of audience engagement where they're expecting that for whatever reasons, well then, yeah, if you've set that expectation, you're going to probably have to meet it and, and not have to is a, you know, is a loose term. Do you have to? No, I mean, there's not. You're not going to go to uh, to a podcast prison, but could it <laughs> could it could it cause your audience to drop off? Yeah, maybe. You know, well, I, there are certain shows I listen on certain days, and so I know on Wednesday or Friday is Hate to Wait. Those are my friends, and they do it on Thursday. But I don't. If it's not there, I just know something's going on, and. You know, whatever. I, I know I listened to uh, You Want to Do What on Wednesday, but she announced she was taking some time off, and she did. So yeah. I just found something else to listen to on but Wednesday. Craig makes an interesting point in the chat. Oh, we'll go to Brandon's. Yeah, we'll go to Brandon, and we'll go to uh, – he says, I subscribed to about 100 podcasts. There are about, there are about 15 that are his core shows. I actually used mm -hmm. to have a playlist called uh, Top Shelf, I think it was. And I know what day they're coming out. Uh, the rest play when they show up. Exactly. Um, and then Craig says, yeah, news podcasts need to be pushed out quickly. Yeah. yeah. We, <laughs> we this week pushed out our May update for Clifton Strengths, the stuff I do at work. And it was a May update. We recorded May 1st <laughs> and it went out yesterday. We have been, we've had a crazy schedule and it just didn't get done. And so it was one that's, and, and I was talking to one of my editors about this and I said, we probably dropped the ball on this one. Like, I, I, I don't know. And he said, Jim, you, you, you were the one who decided the priorities on these, right? He was just reminding me, you, you call the shots on the parties. And I'm like, uh, you're right. I do. This was a, this was a mistake. Don't let me do this again. Don't let me go 30 days on something that is dated content. Cause that's, I think that's a bad idea. Uh, Mr. Naughty bit says there was a YouTube podcast. He says in quotation marks, that drops at uh, 10 AM every day and was alerted uh, YouTube shadow banned that episode minutes after it did not appear in the subscription feeds. 
I don't know what shadow band means. I'm assuming it has the word band in it, so I'm assuming that's that's not good. Yeah. Uh, but um uh Brandon, I ch- oh go ahead. Brandon says I like to have my shows downloaded before I get in my car. Yeah, me and me, you and me both. There are times when I will, you know, you fire up your phone, and you're like, you need to have 48 updates. And I'm like, hold on, let me do that now. They go pretty Not, fast though. Yeah, I find yeah, I use do. Overcast. And if I haven't downloaded it, I was out walking around the other day and I wanted to listen to a podcast that hadn't hit the download spot yet. And I it just I just let it do it over the air. And they're they're pretty small. I mean, six a 60 meg or even a hundred meg file on a phone is still pretty small. I'm not saying yeah. you shouldn't do it, but I'm just for for the rest of the world, you can in some cases just let it download. It'll be fine. Yeah, uh, Kyle says I like the Todd Cochran quote uh, from Blueberry. Uh, People build you into their lives. Yep, it's it's you become part of their routine. That's why I try to be consistent on a date and time. Mm-hmm. I just know in in like I said, you'll hear this in this week's school of podcasting. I somehow was throwing myself on my sword to to meet my deadline when in right. reality. I don't think anybody would have really, you know, you know, Glenn well, did you would get have, feedback if you were late, would you get feedback? Well, that here's my thing. And I'm almost doing the show now. I would rather have a late <laughs> show that was good than an on-time show that had crap yeah. in it, yeah, yeah, you know? So, yeah, yeah. I, agree. Um, I agree. but no, I, I, the only feedback I got was I had typos, which I was like, mm, you tire, you do, you have some, you have some, um, typo finding, fanatics in you like the whole time i've known you really the most feedback you get is around your typos and i just like i don't i don't and i know i make them all the time and i just don't so but you've got some you have some typo finding fans yeah i almost am tempted to get a new keyboard because i noticed this morning there are times when it's either grammarly or something is auto correcting and it ends up auto correcting Mm. after i've moved on like three words Mm. So I don't see it. And I'm like, wait, who that got changed? I'm like, that's not what I said. So although in, in this case, this was, and I've, I've found this uh, in the past where a lot of my typos, and this is what makes it even more embarrassing, are in the title. Yeah. Because oh. I'm not, you type that, you move down to the next one, and Grammarly did the wrong. Have- I used the wrong word. I used dual, the, uh, the wrong dual, right? So there's two, you spell dual two different ways, right? And I used the wrong one. And, you know, that's, there's nothing more embarrassing. And I had, a, it was, I think there was even a, a vendor associated with it. And there's nothing more embarrassing when you've missed, when you have a misspelling or if you misspelled somebody's name. <laughs> that's terrible, too, uh, right? That's, I've, I've yeah. been there, done that. Um, yeah. Gabrielle says, I hate grammar. I mm, love Grammarly, saves yeah. me a lot of embarrassment. And meant, um, but I have actually found uh, a combination of Grammarly and Word are yeah. good for me because I'm st- I am I am the worst. I am the world's worst at this. So I actually copy and paste it off of it's something that Grammarly has done, and I put it into Microsoft Word, and it has found uh, several different oh, yeah. things that Grammarly hasn't found, and vice versa. Yeah, yeah, I, that's to me. No uh, especially it uh, just all the time. I have it running and everything. And then what's sad is I forget what I was using. And for whatever reason, Grammarly wouldn't work in that particular software or whatever. And I thought everything was fine and I published it and then copied it and pasted it into Google Docs. And it looked like somebody shot it. It was just red ink everywhere. And I was like, wait, what, what? And I go back and I'm like, oh, Grammarly doesn't work in this. And everything I just put in was just, you know. Oh, ooh, um, Grammarly doesn't work in this. Banks has a point too. Grammarly is a, they are just dead set on the Oxford comma. Yeah. And that's just, I'm not. And so like, that's another one of those things you're going to have to, if you're, if you write a lot with lists, you know, like this, this, and this, that's where it becomes, that's where the Oxford comma, comma yeah. becomes important. So. That is very, very true. Uh, Fred has a question about uh, web hosts. He says, other than HostGator and Bluehost, and for the record, they're owned by the same company, so it's almost the same thing. Um, well, Maple Grove Partners is yes! what uh, Jim is on. The School of Podcasting is on that. Uh, or I, I'm a good friend of uh, CoolerWebsites.com, which, of course, is my GoDaddy reseller. Uh, I have one. Uh, wait a minute. HostGator took me down and Bluehost was in the process of censorship. Um, well, the one thing you have to keep in remember too, with, um, with any web host, if you're using WordPress, you have to 
like not want to, you have to keep that bad boy updated. I have a love hate relationship with, um, with WordPress because of that. Uh, because if you don't keep that bad boy updated, you're just painting the words hack me on your back. But uh, I like site ground. Um, I don't know that I would get their big shot smarty pants plan. Cause you end up, it's super cheap the first year. Then the next year you're like, wait, I'm paying $400 for web hosting. What? So, uh, but yeah, Maple Grove partners is like what? 12 bucks, something like that. Uh, 10, 10 a month, 10, 10 a and, month and media and web hosting. If you, if you need both. Yeah. The, the difference here is if you are used to 24 hour live chat support, right. Right. Not going to get that. Yeah. But, no. um, it's a, it's a small, it's a small town, a small business owner, a couple, a couple, you know, it's a family that runs it. Christian's pretty responsive though. I, yeah. I, I have to admit if I, you know, if I need something, I just ping him and he usually gets right back to me. The stuff just doesn't break just to be honest. Like That's every it. time it breaks, it's my fault. So it just doesn't break. Well, and that goes back again to, you know, if you're using WordPress, keep it updated and for the love of God, have a backup. You know, that's why I use Managed WP. I did that this week. I canceled. I boy, talk about more mistakes. I have moved more podcast money to. I got to remember which one it is. Podcast page. Okay. Um, that pod, pod page. page. There's pod page. This is podcast page. That's so I moved more. to that. Yeah. So I go in. I get charged my four hundred bucks by uh, SiteGround. I email them. I'm like, hey, and it says your website was more podcast money. I'd forgotten that I had a plan where I put more than one mm. website and the other one I'm kind of in limbo right now was podcastconsultant.com. So I go in, I say, Hey, can I get a refund? I'm not using more podcast money anymore. Sure enough, they whack it. Well, in the process, I whacked podcastconsultant.com oh. and I was like, Oh crap. So I, uh, I, it was either go back to them and say, turn it back on, which means they're going to charge me 400 bucks. But because I had a backup, I could easily restore it, except I right now manage WP and where I put it, which is on cooler websites, are not playing nice together. So I'm working with Manage WP, who actually has pretty decent support. And they're like, hey, you need to just do this and this and that and get the two to connect. Cause it'll take like two seconds. When I it's the thing I love about Manage WP is there it's super easy to do a restore if you can get the two websites to talk to each other. And right now they're not. But that was another one that I was like, oh again, just trying to just, just a little too much haste, creating just a little bit too much waste, and I was like, uh, uh, "You've got a lot to manage there, though." I mean, that's that yeah. it's, to keep track of all that stuff is sometimes pretty difficult. Yeah, it makes uh, makes things fun. Um, here's a fun one. Me, hey, before we move on yeah. to that, let me ask you this question: Do you yeah. recommend? Um, do you recommend when when we think about multiple hosting sites? Mm -hmm. because of that, do you recommend, or what's your thoughts on, do you try to get, do you try to consolidate if you have multiple websites, do you try to consolidate them down onto one or is the distributed nature of it, having it in different places because of outages or yeah. fees or whatever, do you recommend having a couple different ones? It's a good question. Cause I, I do, I have one on site ground. I have a bunch on cooler websites.com. I have school of podcasting is on Maple Grove. I kind of see either or because if it's one, like I just realized that I have, oh, I forget, it's something WordPress hosting on cooler websites, which is two websites for, I want to say 12 bucks, something like that. It's pretty cheap. Of course, I'm, I'm selling it to my distributor price on that, but it's, it's, it's fairly inexpensive. And then I look into it. I could have five websites for 16. And I was like, mm -hmm. oh, I need to move these under the same mm -hmm. plan uh, kind of thing. Um, it's, it's a good question, isn't it? Like It is a good like, question because you know. it, it really does then say, how much do you trust that company? Right, right. And I'm like, hmm, because I was just listening to an episode of the No Agenda show. And in the middle of, of it, Adam Curry goes, wow, Amazon.com is down. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. As much as people build their business on, on their infrastructure. Uh, but I guess it, you know, Again, it really does depend on how yeah. much do you trust that that host. Well, and I think you know it's it's two different methodologies. One would be a distributed nature. In other words, I'm not going to trust everything to one place. And, and in this case, yeah. like if Amazon goes down, say you're you're an Amazon subscriber, you're doing things on S3, Amazon goes down, you're down. 
but the chances of Amazon going down, they're pretty small. And so, yeah. you know, it's that, it's that risk kind of thing. And then I, for you, okay, I think it's a no brainer for you to have it on different host providers because you yeah. need to test them. Like you need to know what they do. There's no better way to know what they do than being on them. But I don't, I don't necessarily think, I think for most people, consolidating it down to one is a smarter call to make sure you're doing the updates, you know what's going on there, you're paying attention to what's happening, you're getting the notifications from the host provider. Those kinds of things I think are important. So it always depends. I think for some, consolidate it. For others, you probably want it distributed. The one thing it, it dawned on me is all my domain names are on GoDaddy. Yeah. But I've never had web hosting on GoDaddy. I have <laughs> web I have web hosting on my GoDaddy reseller, which is kind of but nonetheless, uh yeah. So uh Randy uh, says another strong vote for uh, Maple Grove Partners uh and podcast sites with yeah, Christian. If you like to, if you like to support the small business and and you know Christian, he he's actually you know, he built Maple Grove Partners around the average guy TV because he's been hosting me for 10 years. And yeah. so he started small with me. He was like, Hey, I want to do some things. I want to test some stuff. Can we, can we just bring the average guy.tv and do it that way? And it, he kind of built a business around it. So it's kind of, it's kind of host optimized. It's, uh, it's optimized for, um, for podcasting. It's WordPress optimized. It's super secure. One of the cool things about it is I don't have a C panel to go into. Like, I don't, mm -hmm. that I don't want that. I don't like, no, 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 no. If I need something, I just say, Hey, can you spin this up for me? And he does it. So it's um, for me, it's a huge, it's a huge benefit to have that. But again, like you said, it's not a, you're not going to necessarily pick up the phone and, and get somebody to answer on the other side. It's more, more chat and email based. Yeah. And the, the point you just brought up, the reason I missed having multiple sites on SiteGround is because they changed their interface. Mm. They were really smart about it. Hey, we're changing it. We're here's a webinar. Here's the tutorial and guess who consumed none of that. So that was me. And I just went in and was like, Hey, I got charged. I need this done and didn't really sniff around anywhere. And I was like, ah, so, uh, so you're all on, you're all on GoDaddy for your hosting for you. I'm not hosting, but for your um, domain registration stuff. Yeah, I have, well, I have, I think I have two on hover. Yeah. I have one on Namecheap. Um, and then I have like whatever my hundred plus on GoDaddy. Cause I'm part, I, they actually called me the one day and said, why aren't you in the domain club? And I'm like, what's yeah. the domain club? And they're like, you can get domains for like eight bucks. And I was like, oh, and they're like, and being that you have a gazillion, um, it's like a hundred dollars a year, but you will save that in the amount of domain. So I actually uh, went through yesterday and was, was taking some off auto renew. Like I no longer, yep. Yep. I no longer own Jillian Michaels podcast.com. Oh, like, that's I a actually, sad day. I reached out to them and said, Hey, you know, before somebody grabs this and tries to gouge you, like, I'll be happy to just transfer this over to you. If you want it, I'm a fan, nothing. And I've, yeah, I've tried that for a couple of years. I just went, all right, well, I tried. Should read your email more. So, <laughs> Or they just don't care. Or they're they just like, don't care because this is a weird fan. Like, this is a weird fan. Like, yeah. I don't want to, I'm not going to buy. Yeah, That's we still own, weird for a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, we own JillianMichaels.com. We're good. You you can keep the, the podcast one. So, um, yeah, there. everybody in the chat room is talking about how, uh, you know, Randy says, yep, I'm in the domain club for years. Easily pays for itself. Yeah. And that's the same thing. I uh, I became a GoDaddy reseller so I could sell myself stuff and that pays for itself. And then I do have the occasional person will go over to coolerwebsites.com and buy something. And I'm like, oh, look, mm -hmm. free money. So, and the, also that started with me. I used to hate GoDaddy because they would nickel and dime you for oh, everything. Yeah. And then Mike Dell one day said, actually, they've changed. And I was like, really? And uh so I put one website over there and was like, hmm. And then that's when they started calling me to say, hey, do you know how we could save you money? And I was like, this is a company that keeps calling me to take money out of their pocket. And I'm like, that's really odd in my book. And I just yeah. went, so I threw another one over there and another one. I was like, so far, you know, and I love the fact that I can call them at two in the morning and get somebody on the phone. You know, yeah. so no, right that, on. They're they're huge. That's the that's the advantage to that. So they don't make it click like four thousand times to buy something. Now that was always, I did a well, GoDaddy you, transaction and it was like, Hey, do you want yeah. that? Do you want this? Do you want well, that? Well, now they Let have the this. new thing. Here's the new thing is it, when you buy a domain name, they're like, Hey, do you want this extra protection to make sure nobody can steal your domain? And I'm like, you can't, and, unless that's a new thing. And I'm like, transferring a domain from one person to the other, 
is kind of a pain in the butt because you have to do the secret double handshake and yeah. this and that and and recon you know you have to confirm the reconfirmation of this and that and then they okay good and now because I bought a few domains from other people yeah. it it's a process and I'm like I'm not sure why I should pay and it's not much it's somewhere 10 20 bucks or whatever a year but I'm like I'm not I'm not buying that because I don't need it. So that was the one. That's not auto renewal. I mean, that's not. No, that's, that's, and it's not an SSL certificate. It's something about weird making sure your podcast doesn't get stolen. And I'm like, to the best of my knowledge, it's not easy to, uh, you know, uh, yeah. And then, of course, Bang says, yeah, they can short circuit that. So maybe there's some sort of extra protection, but weird. Yeah. I was like, and that's something I'm, uh, I, I um, wish a criminal would short circuit my mortgage and just pay it off for me. That'd be, that'd be that's awesome. it. Come on, get with the program. <laughs> hey, can you pay my bills? <laughs> that's been my way of financial planning, right? Just stay in enough <laughs> debt that nobody wants to steal it. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh yeah, no, I don't want those guys. That guy's finances, not yeah, in a million years. Please yeah. do. <laughs> well, let's take a quick second. And uh, speaking of people that I would gladly, you know, they're helping me pay my mortgage, which is great. If I had one are the awesome supporters. And let me get this little gizmo off the screen. Uh, We're talking about awesome people like, uh, well, if anybody wants to be the teacher's pet, this is a one-on-one consulting once a month. So if you're looking for an accountability partner, you're looking for some feedback on your show, uh, you're looking to launch your podcast. It is deeply discant- discounted. Yes, it's discounted. It's discounted from uh, my typical one-on-one consulting. Uh, but we always like to thank our $20 supporters. People like Greg at DebtShepherd.com, where he teaches financial wellness. Glenn the Geek Hebert at HorseRadioNetwork.com. Max Trescott up in the air at AviationNewsTalk.com. Shane at Spybrary.com. Uh, Carl White at Life in the Carolinas podcast.com. Kim Craggy at Toastmasters101.net. And Ed Sullivan at Say It With Me, Jim. Sonic, Sonic Cupcake. Cupcake. <laughs> com. I don't know if this uh, is that good. Was that good? Like, I'm not sure that was good. Should, do we, do we want to do that faster or, um, or do we want it? I, it needs, I don't know. Do you have reverb on your, on uh, your, you uh, know, I do on the roadcaster. I would have to figure out how to turn it on. Uh, maybe, maybe we'll have to practice that for the future. Yeah. And we'll thank our $5 bonus, uh, people, uh, Corey Finneran at IVNV.com, Chris Holyfield at I am salt Lake.com, Ed Ryan at podcasting for dummies, Eric Hunley at unstructured pod, uh, illiquity at travel gluten free.me. Jason Bryan at matttalkonline.com, Jason Curtis at cuatx.com, Jeremy Dennis at transmissionspodcast.com, some guy named Jim Collison at theaverageguy.tv, uh, Jim Harold at Podlords, um, Joe Salsi High at stackingbenjamins.com. We need that for Sonic Cupcake. We need That's something <laughs> that, a little bit. A little bit. Sonic <laughs> Cupcake. Yeah, yeah um, we, we'll have to we'll have to look for some back. back <laughs> Jay Cleveland Payne at morebettermedia.com. <laughs> Carrie Porter Bond, she's in the chat room from keywestperspective.com. Uh, Kim at teachersneedteachers.com. Boy, more that now than ever, I bet. Uh, Kim Slusher at Distracted Life Podcast. Master Cauldron at cauldronscrypt.com. Matthew at scottishpodcast.com. Michael Ray, Ross Brand, the one and only livestreamuniverse.com. Rob Griffiths at bedtime.fm. Troy Heinrichs at blacklistexposed.com. Troy Price at frenchporchstudios.com. If you'd like to be an awesome supporter, simply go to askthepodcastcoach.com slash awesome. And uh, later today, I'll be looking at my schedule. And because of Craig, you've heard it because of my podcast, because of Craig, we'll be having a, uh, and because of Mark, we're over our goal to have another um, get together, a private one. And uh, the one for that will include the awesome supporters will be probably around one o'clock, one thirty in the afternoon, because that's something that the people overseas can can hit. So I appreciate uh, that feedback, Jim. You looked like you were posed oh, poor. I, I need to do a second half poor. Here uh, we go. <laughs> so thanks, thanks to Mark over. <laughs> uh, I'm too tickled by my own. That sounds good. Effects. There you that, go. That sounds. It, it makes good. it makes me want to pee, but that's because I'm a middle aged <laughs> well, white guy. Yeah, you and me both, my friend. Yeah, uh, you thanks to Mark <laughs> at, at podcastbranding.co. And All a right. second month. Thanks for doing that, Mark. Yeah, and uh, this was from Trevor Dale. He said, and this is just one of those things where 
sometimes we want to do some some research or just kind of track things. And he says, I've reached 500 followers on my Facebook page. But then I asked people to comment subscribed in the comments, and I would thank them on our next episode. You want to guess how many people uh, put subscribed in the comments? Zero. That is correct. Yeah. The big goose egg. I was like, what? He says, uh, my followers on my page to the subscriber ratio is super low. Well, yeah, I guess zero is, uh, yeah, that's not going to work. Most of my followers I got from posting something from my page, they liked in a group of a common interest and then in, uh, then invited them and they accepted, but I'm guessing a great deal. Don't even know I'm a podcast. Any advice on turning page followers into subscribers or even one time listeners? Mm. Just have to keep asking. Yeah. I, All I, the time. Yeah. It's uh, uh, yeah. people. I remember uh, on Twitter and things like that, where people would go, I I'm so confused because, you know, I've got a gazillion retweets or likes or whatever. And they're like, but I'm not getting any downloads. And that's where I think it was Paul Culligan did a, uh, a thing. And he said, there are many people that will, in some cases, using if this, then that, or some other thing, just have it set that, hey, if Jim posts something, retweet it. Yeah. And so they're not even reading what they're, re you know, Jim could have some sort of bizarre post that's, you know, whatever, and it still gets retweeted. So I don't think people, because everybody needs content. I want to put content out to my audience, and Jim seems like a nice guy. I'll retweet his stuff, and in the end, nobody's listening they're just content putting it out there to put it out there it's, it's like our advertising here like we mentioned this early in the show you just got to keep asking and keep doing let's do an experiment so right now we have oh 28 people watching us or so there's three likes down right 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 down there okay so if, you, if you're watching so let's just see does it work i don't know click the like button we'll give it we'll give it a minute to see just how many of you because we asked you <laughs> Well, you click the like button. It's one of the things I've been doing um, while we're waiting. One of the things I've been doing, uh, trying to do a better job of on the Gallup podcast stuff is up front, just ask. Just say, hey, it helps with discovery if you click the like button. Like that stuff that on YouTube, that kind of does matter. It's not, yeah. it doesn't rocket you to the top, but it kind of helps. Comments help as well. So, you know, um, click the like button. Let's see how many. Okay. Wait, I see 12. Very nice. These Very are nice. in real time. There you go. So, yeah, we went from three to 12 in about 30 seconds. Uh, maybe we'll get a few more out there. I mean, I'm not going to try to shame anybody into this, but I may <laughs> talk at this tone for the rest of the show, not let Dave talk at all. Unless you go, there's 13 likes. So that's good. I almost feel like it's, uh, we're doing some kind of auction. Hey, we, get, we, get, we got 13. We got 13. Can we get to 14? Can we get to 14? Can we get to Dave Jackson? Get to 14, 14. It's Jerry Lewis telethon. You know what I mean, <laughs> let's go to the board. Exactly. Well, but it's, I, I think it is one of those, and in, in not just once, but I think that has to kind of be a reminder. Don't forget to click and subscribe down below. Like, by the way, if you want to get notified of when Ask the Podcast Coach is going live. Click that subscribe button, the notification bell. That way you click on, you get you get notified when it happens. I have that. I'm subscribed to it. And so I know I see it pop in when we get started. About 30 seconds after we get started, it pops out, right? And says, hey, Dave and Jim are live and you want to come join us. 15 likes down there. No, we got 15. We got 15. Hey, can we get 16 <laughs> for Dave Jackson? For Dave Jackson over there, get him 16. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'll be here the rest of the day. <laughs> the uh, here's an oldie good but goodie, and I was really like, really, really, we're still talking about this. Yeah, uh, this is why well, I won't say their name. Uh, says this is in a Facebook group. Says, Hey, tribe, two years after launching my first podcast, I'm about to launch another one for my business. For the first podcast, I didn't drop a ton of episodes, uh, the first week and struggled to build my listeners. I heard that if you drop loads of episodes the first week, you get picked up by, want to guess what he says there, Jim? Want to finish the sentence? No, go ahead. New and noteworthy on oh. Apple Podcast. Is this an urban legend? And I was just like, <laughs> I was like, no, no. could not believe it. Uh, yeah, new and noteworthy for those of you who are uh, new to new and noteworthy. Uh, doesn't do diddly squat for you anymore. Did probably back in 2007. I'm I'm laughing. I'm reading. 
I'm giving away my book, More Podcast Money, on my podcast at morepodcastmoney.com. And I was reading about how the charts really helped you. And this was back in 2014. And there were people that, um, different actors and stuff. But new and noteworthy really doesn't do much for you, as does uh, ratings and reviews do not help you get found. They are social proof. But in terms of the actual algorithm, they don't do anything. But I was just like, wow, new and we're still talking about new and noteworthy, which I realize because I still see people that are using the whole file for download feed burner thing. And I'm like, really? We're still feed like feed burner? Really? I hear it a lot less, though. Don't you yeah, think? I mean, yeah. it's a lot less than it used to be. Yeah. So uh, I was just like, I, I couldn't believe it. Um, hey, I got um, last week a little update. Oh, yeah. so I, I ordered new business cards last week and they came in. I mean, there's always a weird. There's I'm trying weird, to do the thing. Uh, there, there we go. go. There's always a weird. Uh, shine yeah. on these but yeah they came in vista print you know ask the podcast coach on the back so always find me on ask the podcast coach double-sided nice nicely done i don't know 30 bucks or whatever to get them um it, you know uh the we're, we're also we're pairing them you can you can take me off full screen no we're just but, watching you the rest of the show man. this is making me uncomfortable <laughs> <laughs> um the 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 reason I got them was because we're I'm, I'm kind of doing a new campaign. One of my listeners it makes these 3D printed coins. Ron makes these 3D printed coins for me, and we're making another run at kind of like distributing them out. And I think I have some listeners who I should probably just give them to anyways. But um, and so I wanted business cards to throw in the mailer. We talked about this last nice. week. You still need business cards. So that's one of those where you know I'm gonna I'm gonna mailer if I'm sending them to them. I'm gonna just drop two or three business cards in there for them anyway, so they have them. And they get mailed about $4 here in the United States. So it costs me, it's a $5 Patreon level in the, in the coin. You know, those things cost us a certain amount to make. I sent Ron uh, some, some reimbursement for that as well. And then about $4 to ship them because they're thick. I didn't realize this. They're a little thicker than a letter and they don't bend. And the post office penalizes you, at least in the United States, the post office penalizes you for mail that does not bend. I was like, that's kind of weird, but okay. All right. So, you know, typically, you know, a stamp is, I don't know, what's the cost to send something here on it with a stamp in the United? Is it 75 cents? Is it 55 cents? No, I don't even know. How much is it these days? I bought forever stamps. Yeah. The last time I bought them. How and much are they? I have no idea. I don't either. Like, I, I wanna, have no I idea. I want to say what like 55 is. cents, something like Chat that. room. US I just want, postage. What is I just want to go, just make them a buck. Like, let's just go up. I know That's the, true. the post office is having a bad day and I'm like, you know, but I, I want to say it was like 55 cents, something like that. Well, and I didn't, I knew it would be three to three to four dollars. And I didn't want to put a whole bunch of stamps on there. That looks jankety. So I just right. popped in with the mask and did the, went to the post office. By the way, the guy at the post office who I saw was masterful. So if you ever want to talk about how to sell something, I don't know what school of sales this guy went to. And I didn't expect this at the post office, but he started me. I'm like, okay. I need to mail this. What are my options? And he first starts, he's like, okay. And if it's almost sounded like an auctioneer when he was doing this, okay, we, <laughs> we're going to get that. We got this time. $26 was the very first option. And it appears on the screen and he, you can tell he's done this a bunch. He's doing the sales pitch as the things, as the prices are appearing on the screen. You know, they got that little screen down oh, yeah. below and it's just showing up. So he's saying exactly what they are. They're showing up on the screen. I'm like, God, this is amazing. This guy. So he starts at $26. And I'm like, oh, heck no. I am not yeah. paying $26. Then he goes to a $17 option. Then he goes to a $9 option. And then he 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 waits for a second. And I look at him and he, and he goes, well, we do have the standard delivery of $4. And I'm like, I'll take that one. But, you know, in sales, when you're doing things, you don't start with the cheapest options and you go expensive. You start with the best, the premium, and you work your way down and you wait for your you wait for the person you're working with to, ch to bite. And you don't you wait, you know, you wait till you get that no and then you drop it down. You wait till you get that no and you drop it down. Did not expect that at the U.S. Post Office. And I think there's a lesson there oftentimes, too, when we think about. Uh, what, how we post on Patreon or how we sell our ads or how we do those. Sometimes we put the cheapest things we have out there. Of course, people are going to take the cheapest option on the first round. But if you don't, if you don't give them some options to say, oh, you know, I think Patreon has been recommending don't do $1 plans. No. Like, right. Now that's self-serving for them. Let's just be really, really clear. Self-serving. Right. right. But I think it's a good recommendation, Dave. I don't know. As we as we think about the way we sell ourselves, I think we sell ourselves too cheap sometimes. Absolutely. In in this class I've been taking, we got into 
pricing things. And I said, you know, when I first opened the school of podcasting was five bucks and I couldn't, you know, couldn't give it away. And my one friend said, can you name anything on the internet that you can buy for five bucks? That's worth anything. He goes, most people are paying five bucks in shipping. And I was like, that's a good point. So as I raised my prices over the years, I a got more people because people saw that and went, Oh, well that can't be any good. And then, uh, then the other thing was I got better. It sounds weird. I got kind of better students because at twenty dollars people would sign up and still not do anything. Yeah. And I'm like, well, how am I supposed to help you if you're not like get up and go? Uh, but she said, she said, look at how much somebody would have to buy if you went and bought a class, if you went and bought some books. Think about the time they would have to watch all the outdated YouTube videos. She goes, you are delivering value to these people, especially if you're helping them transform from point A to uh to point b so uh yeah and, and she said absolutely she goes when um she goes we always talk about pricing and she goes people always want to do one dollars and five dollars and she goes and i can just tell you that in almost all cases but not all she goes but in most cases that doesn't work she goes because you think you're going to make it up in volume and she goes you don't and she goes the other thing is you get people she goes people pay attention to things they pay for and she yes. goes, and if you're yes. not, if, if it's not a pain point, then you end up with a bunch of people that aren't doing anything. So, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I pulled my $1 plan from Patreon and yeah. just said, you know, I'm going to do five. It's going to have a coin. And then I started putting some advertising options out there too on Patreon. And I've had, you know, you get these emails from folks and they're like, Hey, we want to replace a link or respond. Do you do sponsor posts? I just say, uh, we have, we have sponsorships on Patreon and like, Oh, I want to do PayPal. And I'm like, I don't do PayPal. Sorry. Like yeah. you want to join me? join me on Patreon and, and figure this, you know, kind of figure this thing out. I've been doing math on that. Um, if you're now, if you're doing $5, you're, you're doing great. If you, um, if you're getting, let's say you, your first Patreon level was 20, you'd be better to use glow.fm. Glow.fm has a better pricing deal than oh. anything above 13. And if you're making more than $75 on Patreon, there's a new thing called, ki dash low no fees just the processing fees uh so they don't take a percentage but there's a, a blank six dollar fee a month so and i okay. did the math on that and if you're making more than 75 dollars in patreon then you're paying more than six dollars a month no it's like I interesting to that because i definitely am i didn't yeah, know that so yeah. i was like they just came on board so glow, uh, and glow the other one you mentioned is glow glow.fm okay if you're getting yeah, more, I know you had them on. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, they're actually pretty cool there, but it's one of those things where it sounds cheap because it's only 50 cents per private user. Right. If you're using, that's if you're doing private stuff. So, uh, Mr. Naughty Bits is, uh, is at the door. So we're going to bring, right, him, bring on him in. in. What's up, hey. Banks? Hey, everybody. Hi, Dave. Hi, Jim. Hey, Jim. Great yeah. to hear you were concerned last week. I do appreciate that. Oh yeah, you were yeah. gone. We I was like, where are you? Like you're here every week and you were gone last week. What was the deal? Uh I showed up and it wasn't in my feed. It wasn't in Dave's channel. I assumed yeah. it was an off week and left because oh. I'm one of those people that just show up at uh 10 30 every right. week and wonder where's my Dave and Jim. Yeah, Dave, there was something weird about last week. I was yeah. telling Dave about that earlier. I, I I was quizzing him. I'm like, did we do something different last week? And so, anyways, okay, neither here nor there. That's not riveting podcasting. What kind of questions <laughs> do you have for us? Well, I have a couple of things. Um Let's start off with something uh, from Reddit. I uh, had a Redditor post uh, that they were removed from Anchor for having a music-based podcast. Yes. Yep. Now, this wasn't they were removed from Spotify. They were removed from Anchor. Yeah, same thing now, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, Anchor goes to other places, theoretically. So yeah, but the host is... Yeah, I realize yeah. that, but yeah. I found it uh, interesting that the host will kill the pod podcast due to content. This huh. is sort of the thing that drives me. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I've been, you know, I've been hearing a lot of COVID with all, with all this COVID stuff going on. There's, it's not just, not just Spotify, not, I mean, YouTube's taken interest and there's some, you know, there's some content that's being limited or removed if, and, you know, so I think there's a lot of that going on right now. It wouldn't, it wouldn't surprise me, but no. Oh. Well, there's a name I can say right now, and it will get your uh, show taken off the live stream. Don't right do as we it. Speak. Don't uh, do it. They pulled down C-SPAN because a senator said this wow. name. 
wow. uh, on the live stream of C-SPAN. Wow. So yeah, yeah. No, you got to be careful. It's 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 a weird it's a weird world right now. That, that there's definitely some of that going on. Well, for example, I just posted into the YouTube live chat uh, a couple of words, and uh, I don't know if you can necessarily see them or not because yeah. no, they're. they're they're uh, Chinese. They're Chinese. Uh, they a week ago you would not have been able to see them. They were being deliberately censored out of live chats and comments by YouTube because saying the words "communist bandit" and "50 cent party" uh, offended someone, and it was specifically pulled out of uh, all chats hmm. Uh, hmm. going back about a year. Apparently, interesting. Uh, 50 cent parties basically uh, paid people who repost propaganda mm. and it was a slur used against them who, uh, when they repost uh, comments. It's like yeah. uh, the movie shills. Uh, so, that... so bangs, you're saying there's active uh, censoring going on inside of Google hang or Google chat rooms. Is that oh, what absolutely. Saying? There yeah, are lots yeah. of words I can type yeah. in there or post, sure. most of sure. them being very offensive. Uh, yeah. There's a list of them uh, somewhere I can track down. I've posted it on Reddit before. Yeah. I haven't, I haven't, in all the stuff that I do, I haven't ever come across, I haven't ever had a problem. I don't, I'm not in the political political space, so it probably doesn't matter. But uh, I've never, never, David, have you ever had any, we've never, certainly never had any problem on here on Saturday mornings. <laughs> no, we, we're yeah. not, uh, you know, that's not our, yeah, our, it's not our gig. It's not our bubble. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Cool. What else, Banks? Well, um, the other thing is I wanted to mention, uh, something I was going to mention last week when I couldn't find you, uh, the whole podcast addict situation. Yeah. It was weird. Where Google pulled down podcast addict, uh, the number one independent client for podcasts on the Android platform yeah. because they can get podcasts which don't have control over the COVID stuff mm. and there can be misleading information. So they pull down apps that could potentially yeah. contain misleading information, which basically puts the entire podcasting field under threat. Yeah. Yeah. I think it, it can be a little, that can be a little concerning when you think about the, the power that it's always been there though. Well, it's like uh, Apple and their directory that controls what 80% of, all feeds on all apps overall a big chunk because when you anything uh, that's not a walled garden essentially yeah i mean well the fun part let me do my little uh text expander here when you when you are approved by apple and this is just a small list i'm sure there's more but once you're approved in apple you are automatically then in Castbox, himalaya listen notes overcast pocket cast pod chaser and player.fm Basically, anybody that subscribes to one of the services that pulls the directory yeah, API. The API. Yeah, so they're using the API. So that's yeah. where uh, James Cridlin was saying, are we really an open thing because Apple just dominates so much? But I, I get it. I get his point. But on the other hand, I know, um, I think I heard Todd say, uh, Todd Cochran say that Overcast is working on making their own database. Because it is. If, if uh, all Apple has to say is like, hey, uh, if somebody goes, hey, Apple, we don't like the way you do such and such. So they're going to go, how do you like our API, though? That's all they have to say. And they're like, oh, you know what? Never mind them on that. We're not complaining. We're good. So well, Apple has pulled people from their uh, podcast for non. Hmm, how do I want to put it for uh, not naughty word type reasons sure. oh yeah well sure. that and and, and people... that pulls them from everybody's uh podcast yeah. well directly. not everybody not it everybody. pulls them from everybody who subscribed to apple stuff it's not no. it's not a hundred percent and you're from you're removed from the uh other directories sure at sure. that point That's still not a hundred percent though um from being true. found in the future. Well, it's so, a lot. It is well, a lot, like, but it's not a hundred percent. You're not completely censored. You can well, continue like to provide Stitcher your own pulled uh, a particular host uh, one, late one Sunday night and then Apple and Facebook and YouTube followed suit within 24 hours and basically depersoned this person. Yeah. But even if all those people pull you, you still can have a site where yep. you can have a, you can have it streamed. You can do your own thing. This is a lot different than TV or radio. Like if I get pulled from radio, I'm pulled from radio. That's I'm not, I'm Surprisingly, not showing up still on radio. 
You know, if I get pulled, if I'm on a net, if I have a network television show and they pull that, there's no other way to get that right uh, via, t via television where you can still, I mean, you can still host your own stuff. You don't, I mean, now granted audience is small, discovery is difficult, right? All those things that makes it really, really hard. But I, I wouldn't say a hundred percent, like if Apple pulls you, it's a hundred percent. 80 to 95. Sure. But it's not, but, but. You still have a you still have a voice. You can yeah, still you, do your thing. You're then asking people to manually subscribe to their RSS feed. Yeah, you are. So you are. And if they're if they're engaged thing. enough, if yeah. they're engaged enough, they'll do it. They'll find yeah. a way. If they're engaged enough, they'll find and, a way. And Joe Rogan is asking people to go to Spotify. No, I know. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. Banks, don't yeah. get don't get me wrong. It's it's a it it's a concern, right? It is a concern. Uh, on the other side of things, if we've got some someone doing a bunch of jackassery out there that doesn't shouldn't have a voice. We should have a way to collectively remove it. Yeah, there was a, who should have that power. Well, that's that's the question. Well, I, and every company, and it's kind of like the army. I mean, when you join the army and they go, "Hey, we're going to ship you over to Germany," you can't go, "Hey, hey, wait, what?" No, you know what you signed up for. So yeah. when you agree to those terms of services and it says, "Hey, you can't promote hate speech," and you start going, "Hey, we want to kill every good everybody," you know, kill this guy, kill that guy. Okay, they're going to the kick Irish. out. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, you can't go, Hey, Hey, what do you mean? You're kicking me out? No, you, you had a thing that said, I, I agree not to do this. So, you know, is, is it censorship? Sure. You, you, what do you mean? I can't say we should kill, you know, blah, blah, blah. Well, okay. You can do that. You just can't do it here. And, and it's not to say there isn't free speech. Uh, you you're free to say it, but you're also free to accept the consequences. So, I, I mean, I get what you're saying. It's scary because you're giving somebody the power and you're hoping that that as that um, filter, you want that filter as narrow as it can be. And the minute they go, well, okay, we're going to filter hate speech. It, it's like when I played in a country band, we had a criteria. Only top 10 uh, country songs within the last X amount of years. Why? Because the minute you go, okay, we'll play Skinner. Skinner's country rock. And the next thing you know, you're a country band that's playing the doors. So by having that criteria, we stayed exactly where we were. When you start to loosen it up, it gets wider and wider. The next yeah. thing you know, you're like, wait a minute, I'm doing a show about craft beer. How did I get blocked mm -hmm. for political reasons? You know, yeah. and it's like censorship's well, a tough is a is a super tough conversation. Like there's no we're not gonna solve it in 10 minutes on Ask the Podcast Coach. Yeah, it's, that's a, true. it's a super <laughs> difficult conversation to have for sure. Yep. And I want to direct this directly to Jim because yeah. Dave looks like he desperately wants to drink a cup of coffee for this next question. Desperately. Uh, so Jim, uh, yeah. what do you think about the recent executive order as it applies to podcasting and podcast hosts, or more importantly, the investigation Senator Cruz is in, uh, in, uh, starting up in the same vein, uh, specifically against Twitter because they are allowing the Iranian government to use Twitter and they're technically on a list of no, no states. So I have no comment, no comment. <laughs> I, no, I don't know what you're talking about. Well, uh, <laughs> I have no idea what you're doing. No, I'm well, sure it's an, important, but I, the I executive order, I uh, Trump just know. signed will remove section two thirty protections under the communications decency act from uh, yeah. Content providers. There uh, he is, everybody. <laughs> Bangs, naughty bits. Thanks. Thanks so much for coming, too, buddy. Too deep for us, man. <laughs> See you later. Too deep for us on that. That's that's way too. That's way too deep. When when the chat room starts complaining, uh, I love you, Bangs, but yeah, this is not no, the show I for don't. that. I, well, let me just let me let me wrap that up. I yeah. I don't. I haven't been following that. I I would have no. I would have no. Should we be sh okay? Let's just say, should we be following oh. some of those things? Yeah, I think some of them are important. Like it's it's important to be a informed citizen and know all those things that are associated with it. But I haven't been following any of those. Yeah, Kerry says, "Oh my God, if we're talking about Trump, I'm done." Yeah, yeah, uh, that's, well, no, that's not really the spirit of our show. That's why I listen to um, the No Agenda Show and Congressional Dish. When I listen to Congressional Dish, my head explodes because I will listen to what's going on in our Congress. And then I'll turn on the, like every time I fire up any kind of news page, it's like, look, so-and-so Kardashian wore a bikini today. And I'm like, why is that news? That drives me nuts. Or yeah, um, Elizabeth Berkeley maybe wore, showed off her tan lines. It's like, that's not news. That's just not, you know, it's all clickbaity. 
Uh, it, it, you kind of pulled a Jim Rome there, by the way. That was, I don't know. You ever listen to the Jim Rome show back? Oh, yeah. Then? And he would, he'd have somebody come on and they'd, they'd go to a little too long or whatever. And he, and then, Jim, then he would do his, he would go on his tirade about yeah. the whole thing for another 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> what do you call them? Clones or something? I clones. Think. Yes. Yeah, uh, uh, here's a, a question for you, Jim. You, you do occasionally go on other shows. Yeah. How Not picky, you, but I, well, how picky are you about podcasts that you go on? Yeah. Well, it depends. So with the if it's work related, I've got to be pretty picky. You know, we just I can't right. from a work standpoint, I can't have I've got to I've got to have a little bit of higher standards from a podcasting perspective or talking about podcasting or technology or those kinds of things. I can I can be a little more I can be a little more liberal. Yeah, for me, I've been on I've been a lot of episode one for people because they'll be members of the school of podcasting. They're like, Hey, can I interview you? And I'm like, sure, not a problem. And I used to be like, if you asked me, I would go on your show and I don't do that quite as much anymore. I had some people that would be like, yeah, I'd like to talk to you about launching a podcast, blah, blah, blah. And it would turn out they don't have a podcast. What they wanted was free consulting. Mm -hmm. And I'd be like, Hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. 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 So now what I do is I look to see a, do you have a podcast? And then I started, I don't want to get too, again, too picky, but like, if you have five episodes, yeah. If you don't, like if you, if you have, like, if I'm going to be one of the ones you have in the can, no, I'm, I'm like, I want to be, yeah. I, I, yeah. I, Cause I, I had a bunch that I started paying attention and I just noticed that I was doing a lot of interviews that never saw the time of day. And I was like, and that's when you're like, look, I got other things to do. Do you feel like you're getting more or less in the last, if we take like the last six months, are you getting more invites or less invites or about the same? About the same. And it's gone up in the last two weeks. Uh, And now I'm not getting asked to be on podcasts. I'm asked to speak on a virtual thing. I'm doing a Mm. virtual thing today. Mm. Um, So it's going to be, you know, interesting, but yeah, I used to just do anybody. Cause I would figure in the end, what's the episode that usually ends up getting the most downloads. It's the first one. Cause it's been there for X amount of years. And plus if I has something that's like, you know what? I remember Dave Jackson, he came on my show when I didn't have any listeners yet. That was so nice of him. So, uh, and plus it just, it, I don't know. I'm like, why not? You know, yeah. but, yeah. but when I just started noticing, I'm like, look, I, I did four episodes in the last six months and I've never heard back that, Hey Dave, our show went live. And then you go uh, back and you dig through your emails and you're like, Hey, and they're like, Oh yeah, I decided not to launch a podcast. And I'm like, it's like, well, you know, the, the interview was for 40 minutes. I was on the phone with you for an hour and a half. Yeah. Do you think they're getting to the spot where they're trying to do that? I'm going to make 50 podcasts before I launch. And then that the burden of Could that be. like yeah. is so enormous like that you, you're like, oh my God, I've just edited two and I'm already losing my mind. Um, you know, this isn't for me. So maybe some of that advice, good or bad, some of that advice of, you know, hey, have even 20, 50 is a little bit of an exaggeration, but even having 20 in the can before you get started. So you could, this is where I don't get that philosophy. How are we doing on time? We got two minutes. Okay. Um, this is where I don't get that philosophy of like, so you got 20 in the can, so you're always ready to kind of go. Where I, I I think if you have too many there, it actually you t- you take your foot off the gas after launch. And I think you kind of need, and you allude to this in, in some of the way you explain it, you kind of need that tension to pull you forward. In your, in, in your early days, you're learning a ton too. And so you can't apply that learning to any of those 20 that are in the can, right? You're going to have 20 that have first podcast launch quality, which you know isn't always the best. And then you've you've got to get those out there. And in some cases, what you're finding is they're not getting those out there. So I don't know, that just doesn't seem, you know, I, I, I personally like the day-to-day tension of like, oh, I got to get something produced. I think that makes me better than, oh, I got a bunch in the can. No. Okay. A bunch of people are going to be like, oh, there's exceptions. Of course there's exceptions. Yeah. If you want to have them, if it makes you feel better, do it that way. But I need the tension to kind of pull me forward. Yeah. Uh, Randy says, how do you prepare for appearances? I'm thinking people who appear on numerous shows, but they say the same thing every time. Yeah, I do try to go and listen to an episode so I have an idea of who the heck I'm Let's I'm go. listening to. Um, so they forgot to put down the slider. Starting the show? Were. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, so I always try to listen just so I have an idea of who I'm talking to. And then in the event I didn't do that, 
I always ask, I ask a lot of questions because I'm always amazed at how many people don't let me know who I'm talking to. And, yeah. you know, they're just like, can you come on and be like, sure. And then I get here and I'm like, so what's your show about? Who's your audience? Like how geeky can I get that kind of thing? Just so I know who I'm talking to and, and I want to connect with them and I don't want to talk over their head or anything like that. So, yeah. uh, Jim, what is coming up on uh, the average guy.tv? Yeah, we spent some time with Chris Nessie. He came on. He's nice. in the chat room right now. So, Chris, thanks for coming out this morning. So, yes, uh, Chris and I spent some time talking about it. it. was a follow-up to a conversation from a couple weeks ago about how these – how all this current stuff that's going on right now is affecting education. Of course, there's nobody better to talk about that than Chris Nessie. So he comes on, updates it. I'll be posting that a little bit later this weekend. I, I got to address this here. Uh, any quick tips on interviews? We're 46 episodes in. Go to schoolofpodcasting.com. In the, click on episodes and in the search box, type in ultimate. And you'll see an episode there about the ultimate guide to doing and performing interviews. That was scrolling up the, the thing yeah. here. On the School of Podcasting, I've done part of the show here today. We're talking about what happens when you mess up. Because my last episode was a train wreck in some aspects. And I was like, well, how did I go about fixing that? Because, well, we're human. And sometimes we do things that we go, ooh, and you wake up and you got the five emails that are going, do you know you have a typo in your title? And you're like, oh, my goodness. Uh, but uh, that's coming up. And then I've got more interviews in the can, speaking of having things in the can, that I actually am going to interview. Uh, I had another guy that's kind of making a living with this podcast. Those have been coming out of the woodwork. So, uh, But uh, thanks to the chat room. Thanks to our awesome supporters. Everybody stick around for some post-show coming up right after this. I'm waiting. Go ahead. There. A little post show pour. <laughs> I don't want a premature. I don't want a premature I I, 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 button here. They want to prematurely pour. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> um, that's questionable. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, boy, the, the chat room went crazy at the end here. Oh, um, you all fired up out there. It's pretty uh, awesome. But yeah. The, the thing was the question about being interviewed or getting interviewed. Where do you go? Try not to make interviews too canned. Here's the thing about interviews. I'm doing an I'm doing a uh, presentation today, and this is one of the things I am saying. If you want your guest to share your interview, you have to do an interview that's not like any other podcast, like the other ones. Uh, and I'll give. I always use the example of Pat Flynn. Pat Flynn has a great story. He uh, was an architect, lost his job created an ebook on how to pass the Green Academy for Architects, uh, and his ebook went bonkers, and he made a gazillion dollars at it. Well, yeah, that's a cool story, and I could have Pat on my show, and I could walk him through that story. Pat's not sharing that story, though. Why? Because his audience has heard it no less than 50 times. So I've got to get a new thing that's going to deliver value to my audience, but still be something maybe different that Pat might be interested in, in sharing. So... And as for being interviewed, if you're trying to get on other people's shows, please, please don't do this. Please don't send me an email that goes, hello, I really like your show and all the great content you provide. I think I would be a good fit for your show. I've cured cancer and invented sliced bread. <laughs> Love me. You know, oh, it drives me nuts. Yeah. So um, I, don't oh, get the, I don't get the requests like you do. So that's, I that's, ton. I know. And, and now mm -hmm. I have a, uh, I use text expander and I just go, um, hashtag request. And it's like, I now accept requests through, uh, pod, pod it. I think it is, is the guy I had on the show. So, um, where did I, I uh, Fred is asking, where did I get the coffee pour Audioblocks.com. I got a, uh, yearly subscription there on a good Friday for like 90 bucks a year. And it's not that much more expensive a year, but I get, that's where a lot of the music, I get tired of using the same music all the time. And they, that comes, so you can distribute that with downloadable. I mean, that comes with a podcast yep. license yep. so it can stay. Yeah. So, okay. but it was hard to find because all of them just basically sounded like people going to the bathroom. And I was like, no, and this is actually, uh, I think the title was pouring coffee into a styrofoam cup. Oh, that yeah. would sound like that. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. it's a good sound. Yeah. Reminds me of a like Sunday morning at church, <laughs> right? Because that's when you would, 
That's when I'd grab a styrofoam cup and pour. Uh, that's it. it right? Sunny and then my other church. my other favorite sound effect is from the No Agenda show, and that's just our good friend the goat scream. <laughs> yeah. That's an actual goat. <laughs> um it's very bizarre. Do they use it on No Agenda? They do. Okay. That's what they do is I've if never you never listened, I probably oh, should. You should. It's just for the it's interesting because they have people that donate hundreds of dollars. That makes you an executive producer, an associate producer. And then when they get to the end, they have one like if you Google like no agenda soundboard, they'll you'll see a bunch of these. And people say, Hey, I just lost my job. I'm donating $33 or 50. I think you have to have $50 to get mentioned on the show. And they'd be like, I'd love some karma. And they play this thing. It's like, ding, 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 ding. You've got karma, you know? And then oh, nice. uh, can, can I get a karma cancer sucks? Don't kill me. Hillary, Hillary Clinton. And it's like, okay. Kind of, they have all these weird sound effects nice. and, and uh, yeah. yeah, it's, it's kind very, of, it's, it's their gig though, right? It's their, it's their gig. Yeah. It, and, yeah. and they actually started doing more shows a week because they had more people donating to where like a good 30% of the show was them going, Bob from Richmond wants a karma, uh, you know, blah, blah, blah. There's no conflict uh, kind of, okay. Ding, 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 you know, and it was just like, okay, half the show is just them thanking people. So they went to, a, a, they added more so you could, uh, so there's more show. And then yeah. they, they don't have to thank as many people and right. this whole thing. So, um, yeah, well, it's supply and demand, right? I mean, if that's it, if you get more, if you have more than you can do, you got to, yeah, uh, your prices. <laughs> that's it. Um, Brandon says the interviews that I've been doing lately, I ask five fandoms, uh, have, positively influenced your life same question but all the discussions are very different i usually follow up with why well there you go yeah that, that's uh you can you know you can deploy that kind of model pretty successfully the john lee dumas model as i like to say it i don't know if that's what you're referring to but you have a kind of a standard set of questions it doesn't have to be ex said exactly the same way so you right. don't have to make it feel like okay question number three yeah now you could if if you're if that works for you do it but you can also, I've been doing these interviews. Uh, we've been getting customer testimonials um, at Gallup and I've been doing these interviews, very structured questions, but I try to mix it up a little bit. Now we don't make these live, so I don't have to do this, but just kind of based on to get the best out of the person. Sometimes you want to modify that question a little bit. They have said something in an earlier spot where you can tie back to that and make them feel comfortable with it and that you're listening. So, you know, even in that kind of scenario, I think you can change the questions a smidge and still get the same info that you're looking for. This is from Facebook. Oliver asks, hey, guys, I'd like to ask you something on your YouTube podcast on wait, sorry, our YouTube podcast. So this is one of those podcasts. If we're going to get sticky about it features, um, we feature guests like athletes and English teachers. But sometimes we swear on the videos. Do you think I have to age restrict my video yes. to viewers over 18 only? Sorry if that's a dumb question. Uh, I know the answer. Just want to know your experience on this. Jim, yes. what say you? Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's to me. If you're asking the question, the answer is yes. Yes. So it's like, should I mark it explicit? If you're asking, the answer is yes. And if you're like, should I, you know, in this case on YouTube? Yeah. So I, I was talking to Ed Sullivan the other day and he, he had mentioned, you know, um, uh, we were talking about cigar authority and they, they, they didn't start by you by cursing on there, but it certainly started working its way in. And I think he said something like, I just started marking them all explicit. It just was easier to, it was yeah. just easier to manage than to try and, you know, trying to work it out. So I, I don't, Dave, let me, that's okay. This is a good fundamental question. Do you think marking it explicit limits you like, uh -oh. Two, I mean, are you going to be, um, are, are you going to be out of audiences that you think you were in before? I don't know. What is that? What do you think? I'm, I'm getting the list. Bahran, Belarus, Brunei, Darussalam. If sure. you can't pronounce it, it doesn't exist. No. I'm yeah. Sorry. Burkina Just Faso, kidding. Chad, yeah. Egypt, India. See, I got a, I, I have a member of the school of podcasting in India. India? Oh, wait, I'm in India. Like India, okay. so India, Jordan. It's marked explicit. You are out in India. India, Jordan, Lebanon, Nepal, Oman, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, Tunis Tunisia, United Arab Emirates, Uzbekistan, and Yemen. Yeah, probably not. At least me, not big in any of those countries. Maybe yeah. India is different, but 
I, like you'd hate to lose India. 1.3 billion people. Yeah, that's a lot. I hate to. Okay. All right. That's when, when I took that list and looked at my audience, it was 3%. And I was like, okay, so it's not a huge but thing, but you should still market. Yeah. Like uh, if you, and, and the fun yeah, part, you should market. The fun part is if I mark one episode explicit, one bad apple spoils the whole thing. No, you get pulled from all those countries. Yeah. So what's the, and what's the definition of explicit? That's the question that mm. it's the seven dirty words. We know is that. It? Is it? Uh, yeah. I don't, I don't, I'm not, I'm not trying to poke. Well, poke well no, that. but it is weird because if we said, you know, I'm sure there's a definition. Somewhere. Yeah. I mean, if I said, damn it, cause I hit my, you hand just did. Hammer, yeah. You just did. <laughs> now, is that one of the seven dirty words? No. Okay. But some people would say, oh, that's, you can't say that in front of my kids. And I'm like, what school does your kid go to? What if uh, they swear in another language? Like, what if I, what if I start busting out some German swear words? Cause I can. <laughs> 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 I can't speak a lick of German, but I can swear all day long in German. Does that, does that matter? Like if I'm in an English podcast and I'm swearing in German, if I'm using those explicit words, that's a good question. Yeah, I'm sure there's some standards somewhere. Maybe this is a maybe this is some research. Yeah, that that the chat room could do for us or something. I don't really care to be honest, but I, we we keep it pretty clean here. Yeah, you know, I like to one. go and right to the edge. Yeah, I, yeah, that's my, that's my favorite place. <laughs> well, that's that's the that's. That's the magic of it, right? Being on the fringe of some yeah. things, you know? Um, here's another yeah. one. Okay. Hector says, I'm curious as to what category works for everyone. And we all politely said, Hector, we're going to scratch our heads together because wouldn't it make sense to put your podcast in the category that it belongs in? So if yeah. I'm doing a marketing podcast... I'm not going to put it in the religion category because there's more people over there. So that was a bit of a head scratch. And this is where I think people are starting to overthink things again. And, you know, er anything I've ever seen, people find podcasts more from word of mouth than sitting in the app and, and looking through it. And that's not to say people don't do that. They do, but it's 10 to 20% maybe mm -hmm. are searching the app in the categories. Um, you know, they might search, but I just, I thought that was interesting. Let's see. Um, we're out of questions. That was uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, no. wow. seven questions. Let's see if there's any leftover from last week. Um, did we talk about live streaming pros and cons last week? No, we did not. Uh, you start a podcast. Hey, thanks so much for joining me. I'm glad you're here. Oh, this was, uh, no, we did talk about this because oh. I said you can't win because if you're doing, then we came up with, if you're doing a solo show and I do, and if I'm just doing my thing where I'm talking to one person and then all of a sudden I go, well, Brendan says, well, now I'm not talking to my listener anymore. They know I'm sitting here with other people, that whole nine yards. And I said, but the bad news is if I ignore my chat room, then what's the point of doing a live show? Right. So it's kind of one of those where, you know, um, it, how's that going to work? Uh, Miss Eileen says, um, let me see. This can work on Twitch. I used to just chatting category. Ah, because more people are there than in podcasts and talk shows. Interesting. Um, and th that was in reference to the question of does the category matter? Yeah. Right. And so she says on Twitch, there's a just chatting category that works better than podcasting. And, and uh, what was the other thing she said? Podcast and talk shows. Yeah. The other thing I'm drastically trying to do behind. Well, while you're, while you're pulling that up, th this, that works because people are desperate for connections and desperate's maybe too strong of a word, right? But we crave these connections. That's why you guys come out on Saturday mornings is because you make, can you've made connections with each other in the chat room and with us. And so people, you know, that is just a natural draw. People want to be drawn. By the way, if people really want to be drawn to healthy communities where this happens, like when the chat is appropriate and the con the content is what it's expected, and they're not they're not feeling uncomfortable when when the, when people are talking about things. So, 
those that community is really what kind of drives this engagement on it. And so, uh, Eileen, no, no surprise that the category of just chatting, because people that's what people are looking for, as opposed to, I don't know if I want to be talked at. You know, some people do. Like if you're looking for something in particular, you might want to be talked at, but. Maybe on Twitch, that's one of those things where chatting is more attractive. I mean, it was kind of the draw of blab, right? In its day, mm. and that you could come on and just chat. And of course, it always devolves to some weird, like blab <laughs> devolved into some of the weirdest things I've ever seen. Yeah. You know, some guy sleeping, like yeah. some guy just leaving his camera on. What was his name? What's the name? There was a famous blab guy, and he, he, I forget, he had a really weird handle, and he would just leave the camera on while he was sleeping and stuff and people people mm. it was that's so interesting dave humans are are so interesting yeah, yeah. um illiquity says what about amazon podcasts what about they're, them? they're coming that's been announced now the, it was, another, it was interesting because i was told to keep that on the down low and then all of a sudden i yeah. heard james cridlin <laughs> announce that i'm like well i guess it's not on the down low anymore are they what do we know about them uh it's coming to amazon music so it's basically so they're, they're pulling a Spotify. They're pulling a Spotify and a, a Pandora exclusive. Um, are these going to be exclusive podcasts or is everybody going to be able to, are they going to pull from an API or are they do again, it's supposed to be on the down low and I'm asking you all these questions. Yeah. But. I don't, I honestly don't know. Okay. That. I, I just yeah. know that um, certain companies are ready to rock and roll with whatever you need to get your show in there. But um so that's, I mean, to me, it's exciting. It's another place for people to find us. You know, Deezer is huge in Europe, from what I understand. Don't get a lot of plays there. Um, oh, that's one thing. I think that's a myth. Like everybody says that. Like Deezer, who's Deezer? I don't know, but apparently they're big in Europe. Yeah. Like, that's been that in the United States. That's been the tagline for Deezer. That should be their new marketing. We're, we're big in Europe. <laughs> like everybody. Yeah, that's says. it. I'm huge in Uzbekistan. Yeah. I'm big in Europe. I did a, uh, um, I, I happened to log into my Spotify portal last night and the podcast rodeo show in the past month has had a thousand listens from men ages 23 to 27. Cause I just logged in. I'm like, usually it's like 10, 12, 13 plays. And it's all of a sudden it's like a thousand 27. I'm like, wait, what, 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 what's this going on? Which here? one? The podcast rodeo show. Oh, and on which platform? Uh, Spotify. Oh, okay. Uh, the other thing we could talk about just, it's an interesting concept. I'm going to have to share my screen here, uh, is I, I, I'm, I'm playing with this going, Hmm. All right. Um, okay. Hopefully. Yeah, there we go. Is I didn't know that if you put a Spotify player on your website, it actually changes colors to match your website. Like I didn't do a thing to that. I just copy and paste it and then it turned it, it somehow knew my background was this blue gray kind of color. Um, they do have a play button. They have, I don't think I, can I download this? Oh, I can share it. I can play it on Spotify. I can copy the link, et cetera, et cetera. I can follow on Spotify, but here's the thing. I So I was like, well, that's kind of a cool looking player. And if I'm not, I'm, I'm following myself. They say you can go blind doing that, but nonetheless, I'm following myself. <laughs> uh, so if I wasn't, I could uh, on the edge again, you're on the edge. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so <laughs> if I wasn't following, you know, you could easily get followers here, but what's interesting is when you press play, um, it does that. And I mm. went, Oh, I'm not crazy about that. It turns into a giant Spotify yeah. commercial. And I yeah. was like, interesting but the advantage of this would be i could then go into i believe in spotify and see how far people listened hmm. which i can't get on google which i can't do on apple and yeah I went, that's well you can apple well, you has, can't but but there's no official apple player remember for, for oh, to show up an right, apple right, podcast right, right right yeah and i was like oh hmm. so um yeah i wish there was a google player because google lets you and I just kicked Jim out of the thing. Wrong Bring button. Sorry, back. buddy. <laughs> Bring me back. There we go. Uh, so I saw that. It was like, hmm, interesting. So it's a matter of like, if I use Spotify, I can get those listen to stats. 
but I have to put up with a Spotify ad on my website now. Yeah. And I was like, hmm. That's the, they're making a run. I mean, they are, Spotify is making a genuine run at this thing. Yeah. And so this is another, you know, back to, back to the show and Bang's talking about, you know, Apple controlling whatever percentage it is. I, I think it's way higher than we think, or I mean, it's way lower than we think, but Spotify and Google are making a run at this. Google certainly um, has the power that they're not exercising to control this thing. That's the crazy thing. Spotify wants to be there, but they don't quite have the Google power, and they're they're making a run at it. I mean, we're gonna come we're gonna come back to three. There'll be three big players in this. Um, in the the Google who has the most power in this is not exercising it to be. They could be a they could be a giant in this space, just yeah. a giant. And they just are not, they're just super hesitant, hesitant where Spotify wants to be there and they, and they're, they're working hard. I mean, they're, they are uh, dotting every I and crossing every T to try to make it work. Yeah. Uh, Fred says, here we go again with the latest Bedango situation. They went out of business in 2006. It's so one of the things I'm going to look into is like how profitable is Spotify? Cause we know they have a lot of users. But like in terms of profit, because James different Cridlin, world. it's yeah, a James, different world today than it was in 2006. Yeah, James Cridlin has a um, did a thing on what the potential like uh, percentage of the budget is is anchor to Spotify, and it was minuscule. He's like, so if you're worried about Spotify cutting off anchor because they're bleeding money, he goes, that's that is so small. Oh yeah, no. No, no, that's just, that's a, yeah, that's a tiny, well, oh, oh, that could be a cost cutting measure that, you know, you just do at some point you just do, yeah, this didn't work. You're gone Yeah, type deal depends on, on how bad um, things go in that. Um, gluten, gluten free says uh, they may be planning behind this. She's talking about Google. You can't trust Google. You can't trust any of them. anybody. Yeah. Let's just be real honest. Trust is not a word that should ever show up in these. It's all kind of a controlled burn. Like, what are you, wh where are you at with this? I mean, none of them, they're all so big now. It, whatever your definition of the word trust is, um, just, just is, you can't. The, the, the amazing thing about Google in this is, and she says you might be, they might be planning behind the scenes. Google's not smart enough to plan behind the scenes. <laughs> I mean, they just don't think that way. That's not their, that's not their MO on it. There's, there's nobody, but going back there, nobody at Google going, Oh, how do we take over the podcast world? They're yeah. clueless. I mean, if, if history is any indication of, of what they think about podcasting, they're still, they're still clueless. I think they have a team of, they probably put a, a team together of 20 who are doing this current, whatever we're getting currently like, all right, let's get our act together. Let's shut down, let's shut down Google play. Let's get, let's at least have a standard offering for this. They're kind of bowing and kowtowing to, is that a word kowtowing? Kow, anyways, they're kind of into the podcasting community because we're just trashing them so much. They're oh, 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 okay. I bet there's no more than 20 or 30 people that are actually on that podcasting team that are actually doing things. They're not, they're not serious about this. They don't, they, then they could be, like they could dominate, they could just crush this space and they're not, they could take, they could take that market share away from Apple like that. And it just surprises me that they don't. Yeah. You know? And Spotify scrappy, right. They're coming at it from a, from a business perspective. They're the outsiders coming in and they have some hunger. So they're, they're going after it. Well, and they've, they're they've not said, they're like, uh, we want to dominate this. Like we want to own all yeah. things. Uh, yeah, they're hungry. You can, you can, you can sense it. You can feel it. You can like, I mean, they are hungry for this thing and they're not going to go out of business. Um, they, they've got, they've got, I, I, I think they're going to be just fine. Uh, that was not a stock, by the way, that's not financial advice. I am not a financial advisor. <laughs> that doesn't mean I know anything on the inside about Spotify. I don't know anything. All right. I'm going to share a slide from this morning's I'm doing a presentation at one o'clock and um, oh yeah, we got to wrap it right at the, right at the top of the hour today. Yeah. So um, this is Jordan Harbinger, and there are a couple things I like about this. Number one, you'll see where Jordan has his questions in front of him. You'll see where he has a, a pen in his hand to take notes. I'm not sure what the green thing is, but you also notice that he is giving, in this case, Kobe Bryant his undivided attention as he's interviewing him. But here's here's my favorite thing when I listen to this. I was like. That is so Jordan, it's insane. 
So you guys ready? I'm going to play a quick clip here. So uh, I was thinking. Go, uh, stop, right. stop, 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 stop. Uh, what he did is he's mentioning how Kobe's retired now and he loves to go to Disneyland. So that's 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 okay. what that's where they're at. And Jordan continues. So I was thinking, all right, you're pivoting from basketball to this creative pursuit with the book and the, the yeah. writing and the punies. Disneyland probably dovetails with that creativity a little bit. For sure. Yeah. So it seems like storytelling something you're working hard at. I know you got into writing in high school. Yeah. Did you know Kobe Bryant was into writing in high school? No. No. And when I heard that, it just kind of graced over and I was like, wait a minute. Yeah. Kobe Bryant was into writing in high school. And I was like, that is such a Jordan that he's done his research. Yeah, did his work, his homework. And I was like, man, that's like such a a, a Jordan. And I was like, because that guy, he, he does so much research so he can ask the uh, the good question. You guys want to see the rest of my slides? I've got five yeah. minutes. Yeah, throw them up. Let's, let's do that. Um, all right. Dave's, Dave's presentation in four minutes or less. Um, that's not the title. They, here's a fun one. They gave me, I like, I had to make a title based a presentation based on their title. And it's like starting a podcast, blah, 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 seven figures. So Jim, what are your thoughts? If my first slide is achieving seven figures with a podcast is BS. I'm tempted oh. just, and it just go, I didn't make that title. Yeah. But I, I, I'm, I'm tempted to go. How, how but, big, how big's the audience and what's their background? I have no idea. Oh, okay. Okay. I just somebody asked me that I'm like, sure. But I just was like, oh, that's such a slimy that. So uh here's how you make a successful podcast. You got to figure out why are you starting a podcast? Uh, who is your audience? What do you want? What do they want? Uh, and what do you want? And then it really comes down to I think I've given you guys the stew analogy before. My mom's stew was great, found her recipe, was so happy, didn't even think about it, went out, made the stew, bought the best meat and the best carrots and the best potatoes, invited all my friends over and was like, oh my God, check it out. This is great. You guys are gonna love this stew. And then uh a liquidy walked in and said, Um, is uh is that gluten free? Uh and I'm like, uh. And then somebody else said, Um, is that real meat? And then, so the point is not everybody's going to be your audience mm -hmm. and you need to know your audience so you can come up so that you can give them something that they, they really want. And your audience is in the bottom left-hand corner. They're checking out cat videos. They're talking French toast recipes. And maybe your goal is in the upper right-hand corner. So you've got to come up with what will hold their attention, but also what will get you to your goal. And then the thing there in the middle is, is the, the part that you got to figure out. And that's the hard part. And also that something that probably should be in there is your story. Mm -hmm. Like if you can weave your story into that area, um, everyone is not your audience. And that really freaks people out. When you define who your audience is, you're also defining who your audience isn't. Can, and I can have, you, go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. Can you go back a slide? Yeah. Do, do, do you think um, listener attention goal strategy, there's one more circle. It's be interesting. Yeah. Like in that, you know, because I, I think oftentimes we, whether we may have these two things in mind, but if we don't make it interesting and I know what you're trying to get to from here, but, but I just, just but no, that's, that's a point. And that's the whole, right. uh, the, that circle is listener attention. And you that's the interesting part of it. And if you're not interesting, okay. you're not going to hold their yeah. attention. Yeah. Um, I've talked about the house of cards, the first episode, they kill a dog in the first episode, knowing that that would offend so many people yeah. that would not tune back in. And they said, if that's going to offend them, they're not going to like any of the other show. So John uh, Wick does the same thing, by the way. That's yeah, the John yeah. Wick movie. Yeah. 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 Um, getting to know your audience, uh, truly successful podcasts. Don't guess what their audience wants. I'm actually, yes, Dave is doing this. I'm starting at another podcast. Um, it's not going to be very, it's probably going to be in seasons. Uh, but it's all about growing your community. And so I've been interviewing people with huge communities and people that have huge communities, guess what all of them have in common? They either did a poll or in some cases got on the phone or on Zoom to actually talk to their audience. They don't guess. They're like, I need to know what you need. And I was like, I'm not sure people do that. Mm -hmm. um, solo or interview, when you do a solo show, you boost your influence. When you do an interview show, you grow your network. Why not do both? Um, and I actually just talked about this. You have to do a podcast that if you're interviewing somebody, if you want them to share it, it has to be different than their last five interviews because yeah. 
Why would they do that? Yeah. We just did the Jordan screen. Uh, and we just talked about this when you're doing interviews, none of this shotgun marketing or dear sir, I invented sliced bread. Have me on your show. <laughs> um, edit your show. Uh, Jim, do you know what that is? By That's Matt chance? Rushmore. That is Matt Rushmore. Here it comes, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. So Mount Rushmore is just a little editing. Uh, make it easy to consume. Be everywhere. I am so amazed that people go, well, should I be just an Apple? And I'm like, well, be everywhere. Like, why would it takes 10 seconds? Uh, make it easy to share. And I didn't even realize I went to my website that had been shared 37 times. Not that that's a ton, but what, what plugin are you using there for that? Um, I know? want to say social warfare. Okay. If I remember right, I need a better, I, I need a better plugin for what I'm doing on mine. I, I was using something else and, and, um, it just, it just didn't, I was Hanny, you know, I use that, uh, power p- simple, simple podcast. podcast. Yeah. Yeah. And I wish it had a share feature is associated with it. There you go. Uh, don't waste your call to action. So please quit asking for ratings and reviews because they don't do squat. A much better thing to do would be ask people to subscribe. Uh, how do you make money with your podcast? Sell your stuff, sell other people's stuff, crowdfunding, sponsors, dynamic ads. If you don't mind making 0. 0.007 cents per download, donations, free stuff, and opportunities are how you make podcasts. It all starts with knowing who your audience is and giving it to them. Uh, what do you need to be a successful podcast? A clear understanding of why, who, and what, your equipment, your artwork, your website, and a little patience. And then what are the top mistakes? If you think, oh, if I build it, they will come. Focusing too much on technology and not enough about the content. Poor title of episodes. Boy, I see that a lot this week. Um, obsessing over things that don't matter, like should I release at 10.05 or 10.10? Yeah. Uh, most free things, you get what you pay for and staying in your comfort zone. So that's what I have so far. And I think you should revise, uh, go back a couple slides. I think yeah. you should revise your ad, uh, your ad revenue, the dynamic ads bit to as could be as low as or something because you you pick a pretty low i mean you pick the obviously lowest you've had some experience doing it on a podcast that you didn't really push that hard you don't really have the numbers right yeah you know you know i'm saying i just like i think that can be a little unfair shot at dynamic ad insertion because not everybody you could make more than that yeah, but, but the, you're trying to use that as an example. I totally get it. Like, hey, for a lot of us just getting started, you don't have an audience. If you think you're going to drop dynamic ads in and it's going to make money right off the bat, that's a, that that could be some work, right? Um, yeah. To it. So, anyways, does that do you agree? Disagree? I mean, you changed the slide to. So, yeah, no, agree, I agree. Because um, you... the the one show I have makes a penny a download, so it's another. Point zero zero three cents. <laughs> yeah, you know. So yeah. well, um, we but 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 that's a different dynamic ad insertion. Really, yeah. This is not a sponsor. This is yeah. yeah you know, this yeah, is yeah. the Vox Nest thing. It, right, right. Yeah. If you're going to do that, or any of those, uh, Red Circle or right. Launchpad or any of those that have that dynamic speaker, even as dynamic ad yeah. insertion, any of those, it's a it's a it's the Walmart model. You've got to get gigantic numbers to have that make any yeah. sense because it, it it is you're not taking, you know, and if you have those kinds of numbers, some of those things can be fairly lucrative, right? Uh, when when we're talking about it, if but you we got the numbers. That's the that's the condition, right? We got to yeah. start with some of those numbers. And I think as we're talking about starting podcasting, most people aren't starting with Joe Rogan numbers, right? They're starting with no. 15 people. And so when we think about when we think about getting ads right away, understanding that, man, it's a challenge. It's not impossible, but it is a challenge. I do like the advice though, of if you think you're going to sell ads in the future, get ads in your podcast from the very beginning so that yeah. your listeners know they're there. Putting them in after the fact is a lot harder. Yeah. I think we're over on time and I know you yeah. got to get, you got to go present. I got to go so. do this a hundred times and get it under my belt and change the title and a couple yeah. other things. So. Yeah, yeah. Hey, do me a favor, real quick. Yeah. I, I need to talk with you privately. Can you oh, yeah. can you let the audience go yeah. and just give me one yeah. minute? Thanks, guys. Awesome. Yeah, thanks, guys. Mm-hmm.